Good morning. Good morning. There we go. That's a little better. Welcome. We'll get everybody in here and get started in just a second. Uh, man, it's good to see every one of you here. The hot week we've had, it's just been draining. Uh, and for those of you that are at home, we, we're glad that you are here as well. Uh, we've got some guests among us today. Make them feel welcome, Mountainsiders, and as only you can. We're going to have just a few announcements before we get going this morning. Uh, the Ladies' Fellowship is going to be tomorrow morning at 8.30, and it is at Deborah's. I hear they have a hooting time there, so uh, get there and, uh, and enjoy the fellowship, the Ladies' Fellowship. The, the, uh, Cindy is going to be, Cindy Crumpler, uh, his Cindy, not my Cindy, um, is going to be doing the, the voice, discerning the voice of God. And that's going to be, you see the dates there on screen, September 30th, 20th, 27th, and then those dates in October. What, what time is that going to be, Cindy? Wednesdays, 1 o'clock. Wednesdays at 1 o'clock on the 13th, the 20th, the 27th, and then on in. And excuse me? The books are $20. The books are $20. So we want to make sure and sign up early. That way we can get the books ordered and have them for you on that very first day. So... Uh, there is a sign-up sheet out behind the, the, the fireplace, so please do that. And the mission focus uh, is this month is the Washita Children's Center. This is the last week that we be, will be collecting those uh, items. Check the bulletin for those as needed. And always, uh, if, you, if you haven't gone to the store to buy some of the toiletry items and things that you see in the bulletin, um, gift cards, uh, McDonald's or... Uh, Burger King or Sonic, uh, just those gift cards are, are worth their weight in gold to a child at the Washita Children's Center. Uh, they are just, they love them. So uh, if you've got the gift cards, you can bring them into the office and we'll compile them there and we're going to deliver that to them uh, probably at the end of this next week, first part of next week. And the Bible Book Club, the next book to be studying is 1 Thessalos, Thessalonians. Um, the, the, the individual up for sainthood, Carol McClellan, will be teaching that. And <laughs> I just embarrassed her. Um, I don't get a chance to do that very much. But it's going to be on September the 7th uh, in one of the classrooms uh, that has air conditioning. Hopefully we'll get that fixed this week. Uh, and it'll be from 10 o'clock to 11.30. And again, that's going to be on 1 Thessalonians only, not on 2 Thessalonians. So any questions, you can grab Carol. The Walk for Cancer Research is uh, here in the village. is going to be on September the 10th. Uh, information is in the bulletin. This church will be providing some snacks. So just prepare yourself for cookies and things of that nature that we can... We... September the 30th, not the 10th. Somebody, you just changed the slide because the one before that said September the 10th. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Find the, find the mute button. September the 30th. September the 30th. And that's on Bill. Is, what day of the week is that on? It's on a Saturday? Okay. Bill, we can't, we can't promote mimosas th during the church hour. Okay, okay. We can do it after church and before church, but not during the church hour. Okay, disregard the first thing. It's good to see everyone here this morning. Uh, had a great time Friday night. The men, uh, the, ma the mountainside men put on a wonderful, absolutely wonderful shrimp boil. A lot of you came. And Pat, how many tickets did we end up selling? Yeah, it, it was the first 20, 30 minutes. It was, we had to set up additional tables because of everybody that was coming. So it was a success, and I want to thank all of the men and the ladies that helped 
uh, with the setup and of course getting the sanctuary back in its uh, in the condition that you see this morning it, it was hard work and, and I do I want to publicly thank everyone let's all stand let's welcome each other and pass the peace of Christ go ahead and start singing up here y'all continue to shake hands love on each other smile with each other we're gonna go ahead and start singing here we go
Awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with we stone power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. And our God is an awesome God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Before we get to all of the names up on screen, I will tell you that I talked with Karen this morning, called her, and Leonard was in the background giving instructions. <laughs> he was up, and I said, well, tell him to not be hooking up any boats and getting his tackle ready to go fish and stuff like that. I said, oh, he's sitting here watching fishing on TV. So... Leonard is doing very, very well. I will tell you the surgery went fantastic. Uh, they estimated it would take about five hours, and I believe it was less, actually less than four hours. So it, it went just fantastic. And I, I know if they were here, they would say thank you so very much. Last, last week at the end of the service, when we all gathered around and, and laid hands on him and Karen, it was a sweet, sweet time, and God honored the prayers of his people. So thank you so much. Uh, those you see up on, on screen, uh, and uh, are there any that we need to add to this? Um, Marilyn. Marilyn Sturgis. Okay. We will make sure and pray for you. When is that going to happen? Friday. Next Friday. Okay, you and I need to talk this week. Time, where, stuff like that. I need, I need details, Marilyn. I need details. Okay. Cindy, um, Courtney, Courtney Young, and what was the second name? David Fox. David Fox has been, uh, if you would write the name down, David Fox has been diagnosed with lymphoma. Uh, it is the brother of a good friend of Cindy's. Uh, so please be praying for him. Courtney uh, Cox, uh, Courtney, Courtney Young, sorry, Courtney Young, don't know exactly how things are going. Last week, um, I mentioned her name, and because there was a mass uh, in her colon that, was, that they, they said could be cancerous. She went into the hospital on Saturday. They did a CT scan they can't find the mass. She's still in some pain, so don't know. So the doctor, the oncologist, is going to be visiting with the, um, the, the colon doctor, for lack of a better term, and going to be 
getting together and seeing just exactly what's going on here. But there's so many people praying for Courtney um, that God could be in the process of just healing her without any surgery whatsoever because that young lady has been through the ringer the last couple of years and, uh, and she needs some touch by God, definitely. Any other names that we need to add to this? Yes, Carol. Tell, say his last name again. Songer. Okay, Russell Songer is having um, uh, esophageal cancer. Okay, any others? Yes, Greg. Pray. What's his last name again? Stone. Stone. Bruce, Bruce Stone. Uh, a friend of Greg's, those of you at home, uh, had uh, open heart surgery a number of weeks ago, and he's doing fantastic. Doing fantastic. So, yes, that is a wonderful praise. Any others? Prayer time here at Mountainside is so sweet because it is a chance for us to visit directly with God in his throne room. So let's go there now. God, as we sit here in the stillness of this room, your spirit is so very present. Your spirit elevates us directly into your throne room. Your spirit speaks for us when we don't have the words to speak. Your spirit comforts us when we're in pain, when we're in sorrow, when we're feeling lost, or when we have anxiety over something that is going to happen. Father, your spirit in us is everything to us. I thank you so much. And I'm reminded of the words that Jesus said when he left his apostles and all of the other followers. He said, I've got to go. I've got to leave to make room for the counselor, the comforter, the promise of God. Father, we could look beginning in Genesis 1-1 and read all the way through the 22nd chapter of Revelation and not once, not once would we find where you have failed to fulfill your promise. The covenants that you made with Moses and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, with David. Not a single covenant was ever taken back. Not a single covenant was ever canceled by another covenant. You've always fulfilled your word and it's still being fulfilled today. Father, I thank you, though, most of all for the covenant of grace, that you cover us with your grace every single day. Your son died for the church, the bride of Christ. He died to establish that church. Father, we are that bride. I thank you for your Holy Spirit inside of us and around us that goes before us that comes after and that walks on either side of us father thank you for your holy spirit today lord for all the names that we have mentioned this morning for those that were up on the screen those that we have added father this church is a church of prayer 
And I thank you. We lift each and every one of all those names up to you and the praises that go with it. Let us be today the tribe of Judah that camped on the east side that was the first tribe to begin prayer and praise of the morning. And all the other tribes followed in. This tribe of Judah thanks you for the Lion of Judah, your son. Father, together with one voice, one heart, one spirit in us, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, the perfect prayer that says it all. We join our voices together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to, our ushers are going to be moving among you, receiving today's tithes and gifts uh, this next uh, Sunday. We're going to receive just at the beginning of the service, uh, we're going to we'll receive a, uh, an update from our trustees concerning our, uh, our capital campaign. And so you'll be able to hear what, what you have been able to accomplish through your gifts and what yet we have still uh, yet to accomplish. And we're going to get that this next, this, next, uh, this next Sunday if I can get Scott Voskel's attention and I can get him to say this. Yeah, he was over there playing, I'm telling you. For those at home, he, he was doing something. I, I don't know. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But I thank you for your gifts, and we will receive that update from the trustees this next, uh, this next Sunday from one of them, uh, whether it be Ed, Joe, or Scott. So let's go to God in prayer. Father, I thank you so much uh, for your provision. I thank you that you give to us out of your love. You give to us out of your riches. Father, we, we can never repay what you give to us, but you only ask for a small portion of that back. So, Father, we give. We give with love in our hearts back to you to, to help spread the gospel around the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for these people. Bless the gifts. Bless the giver. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Word 
my hope secures for he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains are gone I've been set free my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. shall soon dissolve like snow the sun for there to shine but God who called me here below will be get together and praise you, sing to you, find strength in you. We love you. Thank you for everyone that is here today to hear your words, your music, your laughter, your praise. Forgive us. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for the rest of the band. I ask you, what is the center of your world? What's the center of your world? Is it maybe grandkids? Is it your spouse? Is it a friend? Whoever or whatever that center is, is it strengthened by your undying attention. You know, we all perform better at any task, no matter what it is. If we're encouraged by another person, while we may have confidence in among ourselves, sometimes we are our own world's worst critic, aren't we? We're harder on ourselves than anybody else can be. But when somebody else builds us up, we feel like we can do whatever is in front of us. If that person is the center of our world, the positive feeling is multiplied even more. Today, we are going to examine how the church can be made stronger. And conversely, what will make a church weaker if the people in it are not careful. If you have your, your Bibles with you today, and for those of you at home, we'll be in the book of Matthew again this week. We're going to be in the 12th chapter of Matthew. These verses sometimes are read and glossed over but today we're going to pick some details out, as you know I often do. Some amazing, amazing things in today's text. We're going to begin in verse 22. And I just pray that the words of Matthew bless you. Verse 22, Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute. And Jesus healed him so he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, It is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, 
that this fellow drives out demons. <laughs> Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, who, by whom do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can, be, then he can plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters and so I tell you every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven but blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven anyone who speaks a word against the son of man will be forgiven but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come Wow. The Word of God for the people of God. There is a bunch in this scripture, and I'm going to try to get through it as quick as I can. I've got a few questions for you. What makes a church strong? What makes a church weak? What divides a church? questions we will examine. First, let's talk about what can divide a church from the outside. From the outside. One word describes it all. Rumors. Rumors. This church, this very church, had rumors flying all over Hot Springs Village about it. Some of you came to me about the rumors that you had been hearing primarily about why we decided that we would disaffiliate from the United Methodist denomination. And it was the predicate for me doing the article, the interview in the Village Voice that, that many of you read. These rumors go something like this. We hear y'all left the United Methodist denomination because you wanted to have same-sex marriages performed in the church and to have gay and lesbian pastors. Hmm? Emphasis added by your pastor. No matter what you wanted to say, or what I would want to say, the correct response should be no. We exercised the disaffiliation paragraph in the United Methodist Church Book of Discipline, which allowed us to leave because we disagreed with the human sexuality issue being pushed upon the church. You see? You see how rumors and innuendo can be, and which most of the time are exactly opposite of the truth and how they can be circulated and the result is somebody trying to tear the church down or the church apart. Jesus had to put up with the same issue from the Pharisees. Oh, it's not new. It's not new. He and his disciples had left the temple earlier in this chapter. It is the Sabbath. They left for the temple. On the way to the temple, just to get things started off right on a good old Sabbath day, a man with a shriveled hand came to Jesus. Jesus healed that man's hand, told him to stretch it out, and it was healed and as good as the other one. This made the Pharisees, to put it mildly, mad. 
And in verse 14 of this chapter, it says this, But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. Oh my gosh! Healing a man's hand on the Sabbath. Oh, that's a death sentence, you know? That's crazy. They were looking. They were obviously looking for something just like people today are looking for something to tear down what they don't agree with or that's doing it better than they are. Jesus withdrew from there knowing the Pharisees were plotting. But the people followed him. They followed him. We don't know how big the crowd is, but Jesus at one point stopped. And in verse 15, he, it says this, He healed all who were ill. Everyone in that crowd that was following Jesus that was ill, every single one, verse 15, if you read up, it says, He healed all. Not part, not a few, not most, all who were ill. Amazing. Then there was a man brought to Jesus. He was demon-possessed. And on top of that, he was blind and mute. He could not speak. Jesus cast the demon out. He cast the demon out without, according to the Levitical law, the demon to be cast out by the Pharisees had to identify itself and say its name. Not with Jesus. Jesus cast the demon out of the man and then made him whole. He was able to speak and not only speak, he could also hear. If you remember last year, we went through the messianic miracles or the miracles only God or the Messiah could perform. This miracle that we see in today's text is one of those miracles. The people, the people around Jesus, they started to have their eyes open. Remember, the prophets spoke and promised the Messiah would come through the lineage of King David. The people seeing this miracle, this messianic miracle being performed said, could this be the son of David? Oh. The Pharisees had to say something. They had to say something quick. They said, oh, it is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. Demons, demons, demons. To get their attention. Let's look at this rumor for a moment. Satan has one goal. It was the same then as it is today. His goal is to spread as much evil wherever he can through himself and through his demons, period. How silly is this and exactly opposite of what Jesus did, what the Pharisees were accusing him of. Jesus, who is good, just cast out evil. You and I see that. But but if what the Pharisees say is true and Jesus is doing e evil, then why is Jesus defeating evil by casting this demon out of the man? It makes no sense, logically. Jesus responds to the Pharisees in our text this morning saying this, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? I'm sure they were looking astonished. So Jesus took the opportunity and he pokes back even harder. He continued, and if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do you drive them out? Hmm, so then they will be your judges. 
Jesus just, in my vernacular, Jesus just called them, called them out big time. But then he hits the final blow to their ego and tells them the proof is right in front of them. But if, but if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. The kingdom of God is standing right in front of them, and they don't even see it. My next question through all of this has already been answered in Jesus' own words. What makes a church weak? If a church can have rumors spread about it from the outside, the same thing can happen from the inside. Y'all have seen it. You've seen it. I ask you, what made the Pharisees take the position they did against Jesus in all of his dealings? They were prideful. They were scared their power was going to be taken away from them. They saw their place of importance in society slipping away from them. One convert at a time, or should I say one truth revealed at a time. Pride can drive people to do things they normally wouldn't do. They feel their importance in this church, or any church, any church dwindling. Everything the Pharisees felt then is still being felt today because evil is just evil. It can do damage to a church. Jesus gave a very grim outcome if, if this type of behavior is allowed to divide a church. He said, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not stand. Put the word church in that scripture and read it again. And that's what will happen if those emotions, those behaviors are left unchecked. Now for just a moment, I want to address the last of my initial questions. What makes a church strong? Imagine, if you will, just for a moment, we are connected to each other. We are connected to each other by a chain. What makes our metaphorical chain strong? What makes that connection strong? Well, duh, Doug, strong links, right? What are those strong links, though? Is it our respect for each other? Is it the love that we have for one another? Is it our concern for each other? Is it our prayers for one another? You know I was going to throw that one in. All of these are strong bonds, but as we know all too well, or have experienced in other churches in our past lives, so to speak, these links in our chain can get rusty. They can corrode. They can break. And our bonds between us will break as well. I want to point out something that will make this a little easier to understand. Jesus said this, But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom has God, of God has come upon you. I'm going to say that again. But if it is by the Spirit, capital S, the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Jesus is telling the Pharisees that these miracles they see him perform, like these messianic miracles, he is doing them through the power and the presence. Understand this, the presence of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Saying what they have just said, the Pharisees are denying. They are denying the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, and God the Son in one place at the same time. That, 
brothers and sisters in Christ, is dangerous business. Jesus warned them, anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or the age to come. Many of you growing up in other churches have heard that this is the pardonable, the unpardonable sin. Speaking against the presence of the Holy Spirit with God the Son while performing the wonderful miracles. That's what it is. Some say this is still true today. But many Bible scholars, especially a gentleman that I've studied with who is a Messianic Jew or a Jew that recognizes Jesus as the Messiah, have said that what Jesus just said is the curse that was placed upon that generation of the Jewish people, the nation of Israel, specifically the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And that curse was culminated in the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, the one that has never been rebuilt. Hear this. When the temple was destroyed, there was no more need for a high priest or the priesthood, the Pharisees. And since the Jewish people were literally conquered and came under complete control in every aspect of their life of Rome, of Rome there was no longer that need for the political insiders, those to kind of go in between the Jewish people and the Romans, those were the Sadducees. Both of them went away in 70 A.D. You brood of vipers. Remember? That temple, as I said, has never been rebuilt. The Holy Spirit cannot be denied cannot if you look at the screen you'll see a chain with the link in the middle it stands out because it's white this is an excellent example of the answer to the question I asked earlier what keeps the bonds between us strong even in the face of adversity possible failure anxiety what keeps the bonds between us strong that link is the Holy Spirit or should I say, as Jesus did, God, the Holy Spirit. Our bonds that we build, that we build between each other can falter, they can break. But if we rely on the Holy Spirit to keep us connected, that bond will never, ever break. We will be forever connected as brothers and sisters in Christ and we will accept each other in spite of our own faults. You've heard me say that. Not the other person's. In, in spite of our own shortcomings. And the strength of a church body connected by the Holy Spirit can withstand attacks from the outside. It can withstand attacks from the inside. And it will be strong. God is on his throne even today. He is on his throne and as Romans 8:34 says, Jesus Christ who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Do you do you picture the throne room with God sitting on his throne and Jesus our savior sitting at his right hand interceding for us? If God is on his throne and Jesus sits at his right hand, then who is with us? We all grew up saying, oh, well, Jesus is in my heart. That's a wonderful, wonderful thought to a young person. But it's not true. We know where Jesus sits. Heaven is a real place like Boston or New York. Jesus told the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in, in paradise a place God is setting in a place Jesus is sitting beside him in that place who is with us 
the Comforter, the Counselor, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the chain that binds us all together, and that chain can never and will never be broken. The Holy Spirit will guide this church. It has guided this church since its, since its beginning back in 1998. It will continue to guide this church through good times and through rough times. The Holy Spirit will guide people to come to this church. Those who need to experience His presence here, but not only that, experience His presence in their lives. The Holy Spirit will also guide this church through its growth, and you know it's coming. The growth to reach people for His kingdom. Only, only if we acknowledge Him, acknowledge His presence, and rely on Him. It's just that simple. Yes, today, the Holy Spirit is in this place. And it's through His presence, the strength of this church, Christ's church, is unbreakable. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Would you please pray with me? Father, thank you so much. Thank you that we can close our, our minds, we can close our eyes. And through that mind's eye, we can see you sitting on your magnificent throne. We can see our brother, our Savior, our joint heir. We can see him sitting beside you, reaching his hand up, touching your arm, and just saying, Mountainside Church, I'm interceding for them today. And all other churches that speak the truth, that follow your word, Jesus is interceding for them today. But Father, in us, in us, that special place that you, when you fashioned mankind, you put that empty spot in each and every one of us. And we search and we search and we search something to fill that spot. Nothing ever fits. Nothing ever satisfies. That spot was specially designed in every little corner and crook and cranny for your Holy Spirit to fit perfectly in it. Father, thank you that you made a spot in us for your Holy Spirit. That you love us that much. That you did just that. Father, we know that we have to guard against Satan and his demons each and every day because as we walk around through this world Satan wants to divide and he wants to conquer and he wants to mar and he wants to rust and he wants to corrode the relationships we have with you and the relationships that we have with each other father I pray don't allow that surround us fill us with your Holy Spirit we love you Lord we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. We're just going to sing for just a moment. But I will tell you. And here's what I'd like for you to do. I'd like for you to look to your left and right. And I want you to say these words to the people. I'm praying for you. It is good and it's comforting to know that we have brothers and sisters in Christ praying for us. We can do anything with the power of the Holy Spirit in us and our brothers and sisters standing beside us. We can do anything. So pray for that person on your left and right by name, by name. Pray for other churches who are meeting right now that the Holy Spirit is present with them just as strong as He has been present with us today. It's so comforting to know that he is here. If you've come to a place where you want to put your life in this church as a professing member, then I invite you to come forward and we will welcome you. 
This altar area is always open. I say that. You are welcome to come stand in this altar area and pray. And we will take as long as necessary as you spend time with God through the Holy Spirit here. Whatever it is, whatever it is, you will end this service. I will not. But we're going to sing. Most high, we are bride of a Savior, and we fall for the King of the Kingdom as we sing the songs of salvation as we stand for those who cannot stand for themselves and we love the loveless and we go the way your light's not shining and we are the body of Christ as we stand before those who can stand for themselves and we love the loveless yet we go where well, light's not shining cause we are the body of Christ we are the body of Thank you so much for being here today. It's been a good time to worship and praise God with you. And I'm so happy that the Holy Spirit came here and worshiped with us, and we worship through him to the throne room. Have a good week. I hear it's going to be a little cooler, so praise God it's going to be a little cooler. Um, and just have a good time. Make sure if you, if you see somebody that you don't know, shake their hand before they leave today and tell them it was good to worship with them. If you would please bow your head and receive this blessing. Father God, oh, we love you. We love you, Lord. We thank you that Jesus, who died for us, oh, what better person to sit at your right hand that the comforter, the counselor, is inside of us, your Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit. Lord, one day we will realize just how important that is, how important we are to you that you would have your Spirit in us, living not just in us, but living and breathing in us, giving us life, giving us hope, giving us comfort, giving us joy, and give us time that we can spend with you. Lord, watch over us as we leave this place. Go with us, guide us, direct us, protect us from the evil one this week until we can all come back together and protect those who are on the road. Bring them home safely. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Go in peace.